Welcome to Modern Media Moguls. My name is Kirk Barbera, and today I have on the show Kingsley Grant of startabusinessonlinefromhome.com. And today we're going to talk about using video, audio, or written content to grow your side hustle or your home business um, to actually make real dollars, real money in the bank. You know, we're going to talk about what content is best for you because everybody's different. We're going to talk about best practices for different platforms like Facebook versus podcasting. And both Kingsley and I do both. And we're going to talk about how to balance good content versus, uh, you know, good production quality. So thank you, Kingsley, for being here and for the real elite, you know, listeners. Uh, why don't you go into a little bit of your background and, and how you got into podcasting and, you know, running your own business? Well, Kirk, thank you so very much. It's a privilege being here with you. I look forward to this moment, and I think you're doing great service to your audience. So I really appreciate the value you're bringing from time to time, and and being here today is a great privilege, as I mentioned before. Yeah, for me, I have, um, you know, for me, I'm a communicator you know, at the first, at the core. I love to use my skills of communication in whatever form I can find it to help people optimize their lives for success. So, really, if I can help you optimize for success in your personal and professional life, then I find a way to do that. So in, in my um, quest to find how best to do that, Kurt, I have tried, you know, I've done writing, um, speaking, and so podcast. Oh, thank you, again. Marco. Sorry to interrupt. Just Marco saying Kingsley Grant is awesome. Had to throw that up on there. Okay, keep going, Kingsley. <laughs> awesome, Marco. It's good to see you. Yeah, so the thing is that for me is the idea of how can I best serve people? And I want to go where it's best suitable for them because it's all about my audience it's all about the people who we serve right and and if i find yeah. that if i can serve them through podcasting then i go to podcasting if i can serve them through my blog i go to my blog if i can serve them through my uh video i go to my video because i find people are, are consuming information in so many different ways we have to give it to them the way they want it so i in that quest for me kirk i chose to get into then start a business online from home because I find so many people want to, to do that. They want to do something on the side. They're not fully satisfied and they just don't know where to start or what to do. And I say, hey, you know what? That's a pain point. Can I help you to do that? Here's how. And then I have, you know, we talk more about later on how I do that, but that's where I am in this um, journey. So your business primarily is helping other people who have side businesses flourish yeah that's one side of my business because uh the other side is the, my my coaching my consulting mm -hmm. and my speaking so i use that platform as well to the various to really deliver the very same thing is helping people in whatever format they want it best and so i do a lot of a lot of speaking and consulting as well but i find that this is a, a great way through this podcast and my start mm -hmm. a business online that people can digest that information in much more uh, smaller mat, smaller way, you know. Okay. So, no, that's great. So I want I want to get into like the media, but first I want to make sure we're clear on your revenue stream, so we can okay. learn how to you know. So for for real elite, we produce videos and we charge people for the videos, right? Right. Um, so I'm not getting paid off of this content, right? Right. And sometimes you may do speeches, which is the same kind of idea. Right. But you're not, you know, you may not get paid for a particular speech, right? right. You may, although you should, if you're a speaker, it's you know, try and charge, but that's a different world. Um, yeah. But you know, well, like I'm a lot a of speaker, so I get paid for yeah. my speak my speeches, and some, I, of course, some I don't. I do as a pro bono because I just want again, it's a platform opportunity to create later on business opportunities. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you, what would you consider? Like if you only had one thing you could say to somebody that this is what Kingsley Grant does, is it, I am speaker or is it, I am coach? Would yeah. you, I am a speaker okay. who does these other things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's good. So all the other thing feeds to the speaking to, to a large degree. Yes. Yes. Okay. I hear your little dog back there. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just one of those things. I just one of those things, man. It's part of the live when mailman comes, or yeah. then that's he goes to turn and protect his turf. You know. <laughs> yeah. What kind of dog do you have? A little Maltese. Okay. And, he, and he's like my, my my my. You know, he hangs out with me, so he's my partner. 
And I forgot because you had me on your podcast. So let's talk a little bit about your podcast. Yes. Um, what's your podcast again? It's My Biz From Home. My Biz From Home. Okay. Right. So if someone were to just uh, look this up on iTunes, they would find it, right? Yes, they'll find it right away. You can type my name, Kings of Grant, or My Biz From Home, they'll find it right away. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, so My Biz From Home, I was on the show. You had me on. I'm obviously at home. I don't know about <laughs> yeah. office, but I'm at home, if you yeah. can't tell. Um, and... You know, so I do a lot of work from home. I do mostly the business from home, although part of my job is to go out and re record people. So I don't literally, you know, stay at home. But what does your typical client do? My typical client is a person who works a nine to five job and wants mm -hmm. to start something on the side because they really are saying there's, there's got to be more than this. And but they don't want to give up what it is they have in hand. And mm -hmm. so they want to try to build out on the side and making certain that the idea they have is something that can be monetized. So what right. I help them to do is start in a very small way, low risk way, and test out the idea and, and see if there's a market for it, if there's an audience for it. And then I help them to then figure out how to move that down the field where they can monetize and really at some point if they choose to, switch from where they're working the nine to five into that um that job or that you know what they've created you know yes okay so part of your job is to find out if they have a good idea that might make money because that yes. is a big problem and it so is. i think um that's perfect for what we're trying to talk about um I'll start something here and, and get your feedback is i think one way to find out if you have a good idea is to do it right and then another like so you know i think on your show i talked about like if you wanted to be a baker to start baking right right but yes. also it could be like if you have if ideas are part of your job or what you're doing then one thing you can do is actually uh start creating content on the yes. side right like that's one of the great things about it like we're using belive.tv to do what we're doing. And, you know, someone can do that with their home business to find out if they have a good idea or not. Right. So when, um, do you give people advice or are you, um, you know, I'm going to give you a challenging question here. Are you harsh enough to tell people that their, their ideas maybe not very good? <laughs> do you ever do that? <laughs> well, you know what I do because people don't want to part with their baby and it's hard sometimes to tell them your baby is ugly and get you know that kind of stuff. People don't yeah. want to hear that idea. Every baby is beautiful, and, and so what I do is mm -hmm. is let them look at, <laughs> right? I let them look at a bunch of options that they have, and what I, I happen to narrow it down to three options. So, and then once they have three ideas, we begin to look at are those three ideas can they monetize those three ideas, and if they can monetize those three ideas, so wow. okay. Well, let's look at the one idea. If you had to pick one of these three, so we know three can be monetized, but if you could pick one and start with that, which one would you pick? Mm -hmm. So once they have that, so now from three to one, they have a better chance of saying, you know, I could work with this. And if it doesn't work out the way they want to work out, they can go back and choose from the other two because they now prove that those can be monetized. Mm -hmm. And that way they feel as if it's not all or nothing is at least one of three. And more than likely the one they pick would at some point bring the other two into play down the road. Okay. So you're working through a process of elimination. Yes. Because one of the problems a lot of people have is too many ideas. Yes. Right. Like, and that's definitely true. It's like, especially when you're in a nine to five job that you really hate, you te there tends to be this, um, <laughs> you know, hey, I have all you 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 tend to be inundated with ideas, I think, yes. because you're so stifled that everything feels good and you have no experience getting hit in the face with reality to see what it's really like. So you could say, oh, I could build a rocket ship or I could okay. sell rainbows to kitties and stuff. Right. Like I could do anything. Right. Well, no, you can't. You can't actually do anything. There are things that are some things that are better than others to do and to right. think about. And so what it sounds like you're saying that I like a lot is that 
um, you need to like write down all of your ideas. Yes. And then kind of let's walk through each one of them in a reality and see, let's punch them in the face as I yeah. call it. And like yeah. really figure out what is good and bad. And that is a perfect principle for media content creation for yeah. video written and audio, right? Is you're going to have a lot of ideas and sometimes people think they, you know, Oh, I have an idea to do this show or I have an idea to do this podcast or I have an idea to do this article or book. You know, it's like everyone, I was in film school and everybody had an idea for a movie. Like everyone would come up to me and be like, Kirk, I got this idea for a movie. I'm like, cool, go do it. Don't ask me to go do it. You won't, you know, they'd come to me and say, yeah, no, I just need you to find the financing, you know, write it, find the people to act in it. Do it. It's like, you know, is there a market for it? And it's like all this stuff. I'm like, Great. I'm glad you have an idea. Now go do it. And that's, that's part of what um, you and I talked about last time on your show, yeah. My Biz yeah. From Home podcast on right. iTunes. And so that's the same kind of uh, thing, I think, right? It um, is. So, so for you, what I wanted to ask for you, Kingsley, what, what, how did you decide to do your podcast? Of all the content you could have done, so you do blogs, but you do more b podcasts. That seems to be your focus yes. other than the speaking. Right. Right. So what, how did you decide that? Well, for me, it's like, again, you know, a process of elimination, but also learning the hard way. You know, I have been podcasting for almost five years and I have gone through several iterations of my podcasting because my audience tend to want they're asking for something. And when you first start out, you just don't know exactly or whether or not it's gonna work. And it's just to get in the game and start moving. So for me, I begin to to hear back from my, my audience what it is that they want most. And I know my strengths. I know what it is I have, I'm able to, to bring to the table. And taking their feedback, knowing what I'm capable of doing, I began to narrow it down, how can I best serve them in a very practical way? So for me, it's knowing myself, what my past self needed, because it was, it was very important for me to understand this, or for the person you're listening to right now to understand this. How you serve best your audience is one of two ways, I believe. One, you're serving a past version of yourself, or you research very strongly and heavily on a topic that you are passionate about. I find the format is a lot better because you can speak more directly to that because you know yourself to some degree. So 80% of what I do today is a past version of myself. And I know that person is out there because I hear from him or her and I, I get the feedback from them. But I know also, I know that part very well. So my passion, my, my content creation can I'll be a lot more authentic when I do that. Can you not hear me? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I love that example. I wanted to pick on that a little bit. The, sure. the past version of your self idea. Yeah. What's an example of your the past version of, of Kingsley Grant that you applied today to, to decide for the podcast? Like you, you were kind of talking about that. Yes. So a past version of myself is somebody who had really gotten to a point where looking at there has to be more than this. Because I had been in a workforce for 21 years, um, basically in the same area, in the same position. And yeah. I have maxed out myself there. And I began to feel like, well, what else could I do? And I realized that there's something in me that wanted to get out. And I wanted to be able to impact people through, to give them hope, to have, to, have them optimize for success in their personal and professional life. And, and so for me, I realized at that point where I was, I was locked in. I could not do those things as I would like to. I mm -hmm. wanted to also be able to have multiple streams of income. And where I was, I was not able to do that because my limited time, we had a family, I was working 95, I mean, more than 95, I mean, sometimes eight to 12 hours, sometimes a day I'm working. So my time was very limited. So a past version of myself is someone who has time limitation and financial constraints and a family that's dependent upon them. Okay, so I know that about me. Yeah, so you work really, so the idea is that you work really well with people who are in corporate jobs. And can you say what your corporate job was? Yeah, I was working at a church and a leadership position. So I was overseeing all the 
the youth, um, the area of youth and their parents. So it's a family structure. I was overseeing all of that. So I had to teach parenting mm -hmm. class. I had to teach um, teenagers. I had to, you know, work with families and counseling. And then I also had overseen a, I was a rep for an area. So I had to see other um, churches that had youth ministries. I had to help them. So I was to teach all the leaders how to lead effectively, especially in a multicultural um, setting. So mm -hmm. I really had a very full plate on my hand. And yeah. then I had to lead teams into um, overseas missions. that were lead teams as well oh, okay. and putting together those teams to work with them. So I really had a very busy schedule and, and I really had maxed myself out where I felt like, you know, okay, I've given everything. Now it's time to do something different. And I assume this was not a small church. No, it was not. It was not. <laughs> okay, it was a big church. It's like hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah, yes. okay, so a lot of people. So it had a, a feel of the corporate world, essentially. It, it was, because, I mean, I had I brought my corporate experience in that, because I used to work in the bank, you know, in many years before that. I brought my corporate experience and training. And mm -hmm. so when I work with leadership, I know leadership. I train leaders. I've done that. I've written things for leadership. So... I brought all of that to help the church create a more structured form of, of leadership, especially when it comes to volunteers who work with them. So really it's, it's, yeah, you're right. It was almost a corporate approach, even though it was a church setting. Got it. Cool. So then with the podcast, so you chose to create this podcast and is the idea that it allows you to talk to people um, like or reach people who are in this busy world. And then you're talking to people like me or people who are in corporate settings or some of your clients or guests on the show have been people who maybe worked for churches and, you know, did their own thing. And now they're speakers and, you know, things of that nature. Cause you also speak at churches, I imagine. Yeah. I speak at churches, uh, um, but not as much as I used to. Okay. Now I speak to like business um, settings. For example, next, next week I'm speaking to AmeriCorps um, leaders across the state who are coming together for training on cultural, on cultural diversity because I have that strength. So they're asking to come and speak to their, their leadership team. I speak at um, organizations that invite me to speak on you know, again, leadership or um, communication, uh, effective listening, that kind of stuff. So I do a lot more corporate speaking now um, than, I've ever, than I've done. And um, so I speak to organizations and, and business places. And my message is really about um, team communication, effective listening, cultural diversity. So I take now do more of that and very little in the church setting. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's pivot into some, like, let's try to get into some specifics about businesses and people yes. who are running their own businesses. That's who you talk to. Um, yes. You know, a lot of the people that we work with with Real Elite are, um, they they run small to medium sized businesses anywhere from you know um, five hundred thousand to five million revenues a year type business, and you know our whole philosophy is that every um, every business in America, small or large, needs to have a media department in their business. So your company Kingsley Grant you have a media department. That's your podcast. That's your blog. That's what you're doing right now. Right. So in a sense, it's a, what we need to do is for someone who's not a content creator, because that's what you are. Yes. You're a full-time content creator. Yes. So it's your job to, to sit down and come up with cool new ways of saying the same thing. Basically. <laughs> that's a lot of what we do is like, how can I say the same thing, but a little bit differently, right? Like, yeah. you know, if you ever listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, he basically says the same spiel over and over and over again, yeah. but he says it in different ways yeah. and you know, it's really good. Of course. Um, so that's part of, that's one part of being a content creator saying the same thing in different ways. But the, the other, th the, the challenge is like, let's say you're, um, you know, a, f a financial advising firm, or let's say you're a real estate investing company like uh, Marco here, who's, who said that you're so awesome. And <laughs> um, let's say you're, uh, or even a dentist, like how right. can someone who's not a content creator, do you think, you know, let's say a client, let, or from your world, who's something, someone who's not a content creator in your clientele that you've worked with? And what have you told them, you know, to help them create content? 
Well, first of all, like I, I started to mention about dentists, for example, I have a dental client and, uh, very, you know, it's a small business, uh, but it's very done, doing very, very well and having, of course, multiple staff members and so on. And for, for this business, what they're struggling with is really the branding idea. How do they brand themselves um, effectively? I've introduced mm-hmm. the idea of co- um, podcasts, of course, and blogging, your, your general ideas, but it's really how to have that centralized message, what it is that they do. When I look at their website and what they have provided, it doesn't clearly state one message across the board. It's, it's really hard for a person who have no idea what they do to come in and find out effectively, I mean, find out very um, right away what it is, the service they provide. So what I would ha- I help this um, person to do is, I said, let's kind of rewind the tape. Let's kind of take it all the way back. And let's start with the very simplest way. What do you want? What's the message you want your patients to hear are the one thing you do very well. So it could mm-hmm. be you want to be, be branded as the most um, you know, caring dentist in town or the more the most um, uh, patient uh, dentist in town. Okay, if that's the case, well, let's work on a story around that. And mm-hmm. so I would say, let me tell me some stories of people who have said that. How can we read that into your content? And then I, they have not done a podcast, but they have done, you know, some stories here and there. So well, why don't you weave those stories in your, have someone, maybe not yourself, have someone write a blog content on that. Because people, they relate more with stories than they do with um, just hard facts. As we know, facts, you know, tell stories selves. And I said, if you're able to have the person's permission and quote them of their um, experience at your dental office, that will go a much longer farther way than if you try to convince people about how good you are or about what quality of work you provide because it's your audience, your patients that determine your quality of service, not you. You don't, you know, you can say, oh, we, we give the best service in town. Says who? <laughs> Unless you have someone who can say that for you, no one's going to accept and buy that. They won't believe yeah. that. But yeah. someone is saying that for you is what they will believe. So if you're out there trying to tell, tell the story well, have someone speak on, your, speak on your behalf who experience your service, and mm-hmm. they will say you are a quality, great um, service provider. That sells a whole lot more than if you tell the story yourself. So, so one thing I'm getting out of this is when you work with a client, whether it's, if it's dentist, a big thing you're focused on is just helping them with general marketing and branding. Yes. And then um, the content comes out of that. Yes. So larger companies generally don't, ha- un- unless they're business to business. Um, and in that case, they still need to do it, but that's a different discussion, I think. But uh, most medium sized companies don't have to think as much about it, except if they want to improve it. It's often that small startup or smaller business who maybe they made some money because they had good relationships. You know, maybe they uh, got someone to invest in them a little bit. And now, you know, and they did a good job, you know, going to networking events and, and uh, you know, using the network they had to start and to grow their business a bit. But it's when they really want to keep growing it that it becomes a problem if you don't have good marketing and especially good branding because what you're saying is you the best branding is when other people go out and advocate for you yes right? the, the best way that kingsley grant is going to get sales is if kirk barbera goes dude you gotta hire kingsley right right like if you want to get from one to two million that's the only way it's worth whatever money he wants within that range right you anything <laughs> he asks within that range go spend it right um, same thing with like real elite. Like if, if someone said, if you say, Oh, if you want to do social media videos, right, go to real elite. Right? right. So part of it is the marketing and branding that you're talking about that you want to make sure that's clear. And that's yes. one of the things that we at real elite have learned a lot is that we have spent a lot of times with our clients, um, who hire us, like, let's, you know, make eight videos for us. Right. And, and it's recording them. It's doing stuff. And then the thing we run into is that they don't know what to say in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. And then we're like, okay, so wait, you've been in business for four years. You know what to say. Right. Or, or a lot of times it's, they've been in business for six months to a year and they don't know what to say. Um, it's rarely the four or five, six year old company that does not 
have a clear message because to get there, they've done a lot to uh, with their branding already. Maybe right. they want to improve it, but they want to do. They've done a lot. So the point is, I, from what I'm hearing with you, and I agree with this, is there's this. Um, Men, the first step in content creation is to th- is to get clear on your business. Yes. So so you, maybe one way to think about this is use the business use the creation of a video, of an article, of a podcast as a manifesto. Right. Mm-hmm. Like this is what I'm all about. I want to, you know, I'm a dentist who wants you to walk away feeling pleasure after coming to a dentist (laughs) rather than pain, right? Right. I want you, your kids to have positive experiences only, not negative experiences. So they don't spend the rest of their life fearing and in terror of the (laughs) dentist, right? Yeah, It's it's like, I I would say it's, uh, Kirk is like, for example, uh, uh, in this dental uh, um, office, it's like the brand could be, well, you want people that when they smile, their friends uh, are envy, envy your smile. So that's a brand, okay, right? I like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So now that's that not my like, smile. Nobody envies my smile. <laughs> no, no one envies <laughs> mine either. So you like, all right, dude, are you smiling? Is your <laughs> Somebody actually asked me that once. I was like, I was somewhere, and I was at a photograph. I was getting photographs with this organization that I'm a part of, Loop SA, um, and they, this the photographer was like are you smiling? Like, what's happening? And he's like, are you just opening your mouth? Like, I'm like, that's my smile, bro. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Yeah, no, I think like something like that, where, you know, here it is that when people come in and they're not coming in necessarily for the service, they're coming in for the benefits and the benefit that they're going to get from, from doing business with you as a dentist is that when they open their mouth to smile, they will not be asked questions. Are you smiling? They'll be asking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> asking, you know, who, who did that dental, dental work for you? And yeah. that is what I think is a story you want to have people to, and in any business really <clears throat> is, is a benefit to take away. What is it you want the song that to sing, that they will sing about mm-hmm. you and the praises they sing about you because of how they feel is elevating the person's status, right? So they feel yeah. very, very among their friends. Once I have the elevation of my status, hey, you know what? I am your biggest fan for life. Yeah. Okay. And so for you, the first step for that, for your business was the podcast. Is that correct? Yeah. When yes. you launched your business, you launched the podcast simultaneously. Yes, I did. And for you, what do you like best? Do you like the podcast or if you had infinite amount of money would you do videos instead or as well you know i I would do both i think for me i I really like the fact of using a platform like the video uh, do do a video on our podcast is to get the message out and i look for how again as i said before people consume content in different ways and we want to give it to them the way they want to consume it so if video is a way to consume it then that's the, the the way i want to give them the drawback I find sometimes with video is that the content you may want to listen to it and then to sit down and watch it. Whereas the audio, the podcast, they can always have it in their pocket and go ever wherever they want to and listen on the go. Like I do a lot of podcasts listening driving. Now I could not be watching a video and listen and, and listen at the same time. I have a, an accident, right? Mm. But when I want to learn some something, people do, man. Yeah, some people do, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, when I want to learn something, Kirk, I really will sit down and I want to go to YouTube. A, a video, you show me something. I learn through a visual, so I learn easier yeah. that way. So I find the power of that. So I think it's all about what's the best way to deliver the content to your audience. And that's why we need to know our audience very well to see Helps. where they're at, what they want, and give it to them the way they want it. Great. This this is awesome. It's a good segue into there's a couple final things I want to really touch on here. That is the um, idea of how to use this kind of media to make money, right? So part of what we try to help people realize is branding in and of itself doesn't directly lead to money necessarily. Right. Like right. you don't put out a a cool Nike video and then people run to the like run to the uh, you know shoe store buy online. Although they can, what right. more likely happened happens is that 
you're telling the story so that when they see a storefront or they see an ad, which is not branding and advertising is part of branding, but it's not a brand. It's not the branding necessarily. Right. Um, so anyway, the, what I'd like to kind of touch on here is helping people use media like written audio, video content, one way or the other to actually make sales, not to get a million views, right? but to make sales. Right. And people do not seem to understand that there is a difference. Like, yes, if you get a million views, amazing, but there's a lot of people uh, who make a cat video or something funny that gets millions of views and doesn't lead to sales all the exactly. time. Right. And so what you need to learn is how to, you know, make video for five people that makes one sale. Yeah. Like that's better than 5 million that makes no sales. Right. It's true. So it's true. what, um, do you have any advice for people on how to use, like, how do you use your podcast to make money uh, generally for your business? Well, for me, I have um, products that in my book or my services. However, I also find, especially through a video is where you're showing something. For example, when I do my podcast, I talk about the microphone that I use to do my podcast and how it captures and the sound. So I really talk through why I believe this microphone is the best microphone. Then I have um, a, a link, provide a link for someone who want to purchase a, a microphone that they now know. Uh, they know me, like me, trust me, I would trust anything I say. So I just now get a link that have in there, um, of course, for me to be able to, um, to, to get a, a few dollars because they buy it through me, through Amazon, right? So I, I will be able to make some money from that. So whatever product that you want to use and tell people about, why not find out if there is a, um, you know, if you can do a joint, um, not a joint venture, but a affiliate, your affiliate with that company and see they have, uh, most companies have affiliate um, opportunities. And so you're able now to make a few dollars off that. They don't pay any more for the product, but you make a commission because they bought it through your link. So I find you can monetize that way and sell directly through your podcast or your video if you can have those affiliate links in, in, uh, inside there. In your blog, the same idea. You put a link in your blog that goes to the affiliate uh, products and you make money from that as well. So let's let's apply this to people who aren't content creators. So a dentist, what, so like for instance, what you're saying is, you know, you're building an audience for people who are at home trying to right. start or trying to start a business at home, maybe one day quit their right. job. So that's right. your basic audience. So they are interested in things perhaps like how to do what we're doing right now. Right. Right. So, so therefore you can give them some tips, tricks, and then they'll listen to you because they know you because they've been listening to your podcast because right. you've been interviewing interesting people like me. I'm <laughs> That's um, right. And then tell, and then giving them uh, like, and then say, Hey, go check out this link. Right. And that the link is, you know, to a, 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 an affiliate link that you get a, you know, dime or whatever out of it. Or something right. Like that, right. A couple of, right. a couple of dimes. Right. And now a dentist, though, where I, I don't know why I always use the word dentist or the, yeah. the example, but a dentist can do the same thing, though, in, in the sense that, you know, in the office of a dentist, they tend to sell things like toothbrushes. Right. They might have their favorite. So they can on their podcast, on their blog, on their videos, they can talk about how to brush your teeth. Right. right? And they might. Um, I just saw this this thing for an Alexa skill. Do you know about Alexa skills? I've heard about it. I'm not used. I've heard about it. Yes. So Alexa skills is, you know, you say, Hey, Alexa, you know, order pizza. That's an Alexa mm -hmm. skill. Order my favorite pizza. Alexa will do all the things necessary. Give you credit card, you know, go online, put in your order, put in your uh, address, uh, put in your credit card information. And then the pizza will just show up. And all you have to do is say, Hey, Alexa, order pizza from Domino's my favorite. Right. Right. So that's an Alexa skill. So there's um, Gimlet Media, which there's a show called uh, Alex Inc. with Zach Braff. That's about to be on ABC, I think. It's a show about a guy creating a podcast. And it's based on a real human being. Uh, wow. His name is Alex. Uh, and he created Gimlet Media, which is, you know, start your, it's, it's a very popular uh, net channel of, of podcasts. Anyway, so what Gimlet Media is starting to do is they're starting to do this Alexa skill for little kids uh, playing games 
uh, and singing songs while they're brushing their teeth to encourage them and inspire them to brush their teeth, right? So that that's an advanced thing. But a doctor doesn't have to necessarily get that advanced, but right. he can talk to his current audience and build trust with potential audiences by doing videos on how to properly floss, the importance right. of flossing, you know, and even though those videos are everywhere, right? The advan- the perk and the benefit and the reason to do it is that you are doing it. So yes. a client that maybe someone referred them to you, they go, you know, this is very common in business, right? Kingsley, yeah. I'm a dentist. Kingsley's like, hey, my dentist is Kirk. Go check him out. So I just moved into, into town. John was in town. Kingsley says, go to Kirk and Kirk will work on your teeth. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Bad idea. Um, you will have no teeth left. But, you know, if you did that, you know, I have one opportunity with that person. Maybe he's like, yeah, he does a good job. Great. He's just a dentist. Right. If I walk out of there and see a video of you that I like, you know, telling my kids how to properly brush their teeth, I might then become a part of your family. I'm more likely to be inured or or like um, attached to your content. So I'll buy more of your stuff. You know, I'll go more often. So the purpose of making media to make money is it's a virtuous cycle. As you get people in through offline sources, And then they're in your cycle and they watch your content and they're excited about you. And so they are sold on you forever. And then they go out and get other people from outside your circle and bring them in. And and, and then the second thing is what you said is you can also make a little bit of extra dollars by putting affiliate links where people can buy the things that you recommend that are because they know and trust you. Yeah, and I think the direct sale could also be like, for example, Dentists, again, going back to the same illustration, and they have a package for teeth whitener. And so, again, to have your neighbors envy your smile, and they, they have a, a, a markup on that, and they have it on their website. You can order directly from them. They can have a drop shipped, or they could send it themselves, or you can go and pick it up, however you want it to be delivered. So they now, again, once they are the patient have gone to see them and like them, know them, like them, and trust them, they will buy from them time and time again. So I will tell this dentist, for example, in a video, well, why don't you show a client who have come and got extra, you know, ex- good service from you, is ecstatic about the, the smile he or she now have, and say, hey, what made this possible was my dentist recommending this whitening package that he provides. Again, boom, what happened now? They hear that someone like themselves Telling the story, not the dentist. Now they believe the dentist. They know the dentist like them and trust him or her. Now they're now able to order that package. You could have a landing page where you, you also have them go there and place their order, get it, and you can collect it again. Collect their email addresses. Now you have their email to do a follow up service with them and say the next day, hey, by the way, I have a new brand new product that came out. You bought this on this date. Here's what will help you even become better at that. So now you can sell to them a second time and a third time and so on. Yeah, I love that. By the way, um, we have uh, Ryan Friedman who said, I think you just ordered my pizza for me. <laughs> so oh, I got yeah. some people uh, who are using this. Okay, so that's good. So we have <laughs> we have that kind of virtuous cycle. Now, the next question is, and I know we got to wrap up pretty soon, but I wanted to kind of give a couple other bits of really good feedback and tips for people. So one, affiliate links to do content about your brand that you're trying right. to, to do. And then can we leave with any other ways that people can make money, me, use media to make money for their business? Do you have any other tips for people? Well, I, I find, I mean, we mentioned some direct ways, but I think also um, for going back to the business person. So I, I mentioned earlier, you can use for coaching and consulting and so on. But say so the business person who will say, for example, they have uh, an event coming up and they want to have that person to come. So they could sell tickets on their, to their mm-hmm. video and they can just send them to where they can purchase it. Again, they're seeing somebody they know, like, and trust telling them about this event that they're putting on. They yeah. want to buy it because now they're hearing from you directly. Got, yeah, that's great. I love it. 
Okay, so I think that's um, some good stuff on how to make media, how to use media to actually make money. But the biggest things are, um, you know, the, the big advice is affiliates. Yeah. And the virtuous cycle of people get referred to you and they're in your inner circle. And then, you know, you could also use it to literally promote sales for outside of your business. So basically just the simple thing of, of using it um, to do that. Uh, and that's, those are some three good ways to make some money using media. And the last thing is that I wanted to talk to you about Kingsley is, you know, we talked about your podcast, your business, but what do you think about, or what are you most excited about in regards to the future of media content creation? You know, especially go back to the podcast. I'm so excited right now because, you know, podcast is in this infancy stage. And right now, some, you know, new technology is allowing podcasts to be in cars. So people are going to consume podcasts a whole lot more. I believe as a business person, you want to make sure a podcast is part of your marketing process because it's, it's not going away. It's just getting started. And people are going to be able to listen to you, hear what you have to offer, connect with you, build relationship with you. And I would, t I would say, hey, add podcasting to your marketing, um, your, your marketing uh, services you have already offered. You have others out there, but I believe podcasting is now, is, is the way because again, people can listen to it and you can download the script if they want to have the script, you can send that to them. So really it's a win-win. And I would just say, hey, don't, I mean, consider podcasts to be the, the next addition to your marketing um, strategy. All right. I love it. And then um, any last words of advice on, or, or any last words on how people can find you, what you're working on. You know, I provided a link on the show Thank so you. people could check you out. Uh, but anything about what you're doing that we can follow you on. Yeah, I, uh, I, Kirk, I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much for having me and, but also to give me the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Kingslegrant.com. K I N G S L E Y. G-R-A-N-T, kingslegrant.com, is really my central hub for my speaking, coaching, and consulting. So you can find out a lot of my blogs are there. And I'm right now working on a new book that's called um, The Curious Leader, because I believe mm -hmm. that we are leaders and in, in our own field and our areas, but how do we lead effectively? And I use the idea of curiosity. How do we then get to know our people, know our audience, and through listening, and getting to know them, be able to give them what they want. And so I just call it the curious leader. So that's what I'm working on now. But if you want to hear more and follow me in this process, in the journey, just go to kinsagrant.com and it will lead you to all the different ways to con connect with me. Love it. All right. Well, now I got to go work out so I can get some pizza. <laughs> I'm hungry for pizza now that we're talking about it. Alexa, so thank you. Get me some pizza. Uh, I don't have that yet, but I want, if I had that, that'd be so bad. Oh, it's yeah. like, Alexa, yes. order me four pizzas, two ice creams. Like, no. <laughs> and That's some beer. Good. And some beer. <laughs> oh, man. Ice cream and beer. Nothing better, man. Yeah. Well, Kingsley Grant, thank you so much for being part of the show. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll keep in touch and talk soon. Yes, Kurt. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it um, having me here.